For Radio Cayman News, I'm Felicia rankin Solins. Over the last week, Royal Cayman Islands Police have responded to four burglary reports, of which three have been at commercial properties located in Georgetown. So far this year, just under 30 commercial burglaries have been reported to the police. The public is being asked to take preventative measures with their businesses in order to avoid loss and damage. Particularly, the police encourage business owners to increase security, if possible, by engaging security company services, installing alarm and camera systems, and ensuring that the systems are maintained and kept up to date. Whilst the vast majority of the commercial burglaries have taken place in the Georgetown and West Bay Road area, businesses across all the Cayman Islands are being advised of these measures. In an effort to enhance service, the Ministry of Investment, Innovation and Social Development provide a new process for seafarers' assistance. Radio Cayman's Carsley Fuller has more. Seafarers seeking to apply for the first time for the ex gratia benefit that government awards seafarers can now register through the Cayman Islands Seafarers Association. Hard copies of the application form for Caymanian seafarers' ex gratia benefits can be found at the Seafarers Association offices, along with digital copies available on the NAU website, which is nau.gov.ky. The ex gratia benefit of 950 KYD is monthly and available to Caymanian seafarers or their surviving spouses who spent at least three consecutive years at sea prior to 1985, receiving a monthly income of less than three grand, and those who've reached the age of 60. If you have any questions, you can email seamangrantapplication at gov.ky or call 649-2950. Reporting for Radio Cayman News, I'm Carsley Fuller. Applications can be dropped off at the Cayman Islands Seafarers Association located at 11 Victory Avenue Prospect, Georgetown, Cayman Islands. A special meeting is being held tomorrow, August 12th, for Cayman Brac residents to learn more about the conservation plan for Sybil's Crown Beard, a rare plant species unique to Cayman Brac. The meeting is being hosted by the Department of Environment. John Bothwell is the manager for DOE's Legislation Implementation and Coordination Unit. The entire world population of Sybil's crown beard occurs only along the seasonally shaded north-facing cliffs on Cayman Brack's Bluff above Spot Bay, sort of going from Big Channel Bluff, Bluff Road, heading east towards the end of Long Beach. So the meeting is really just in Spot Bay for the people there, but obviously anybody on Cayman Brack interested to come out and hear about this plant that has been growing up on the bluff for well, forever, really. The meeting is set for tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. at Spot Bay Primary School. For more, head to the conservation.ky website. The chief medical officer, Dr. John Lee, reports that 330 COVID-19 tests have been carried out since this was last reported on Tuesday, August 10th. There was one positive test result in a traveler. There have been 99,065 COVID-19 vaccinations given in total in the Cayman Islands. Of these, 50,607, which is 71% of 71,106, have had at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, and 48,458. 68% have completed the two-dose course. DART is at odds with the National Conservation Council and Department of Environment over a planned area development application. Radio Cayman's Dion Anglin reports. In a recent release, DART states that on February 2021, they submitted a planned area development application for a resort residential district in the Seven Mile Beach Corridor, north of Governor's Harbor, consistent with and adjacent to two existing hotel and tourism areas, including Kimpton Fire Resort and Spa, the Cayman Islands Yacht Club, restaurants and condominiums. The Department of Environment reviewed the PAD application and produced a 24-page screening opinion on April 19, 2021, which concludes that the PAD application required an environmental impact assessment. By letter dated April 9, 2021, the National Conservation Council supported the DOE's conclusion that an EIA was required Required. According to DART, no other PAD application submitted to the Central Planning Authority has required an EIA as a prerequisite to hearing the application. They go on to state, not only is an EIA not mandated by law for a PAD application, any EIA which is 
done prior to the planning permission process would be premature and of limited relevance as they insist their pad application did not and legally speaking cannot seek to alter beach access or remove 42 acres of mangrove or remove beach rock. The DOE and the NCC have released a response confirming they have asked the DART organization to provide an EIA. They state it is because the pad application that was submitted by the organization seeks permission to develop on a scale that substantially exceeds the allowance indicated in the development and planning regulations. Therefore, the DOE believes it is imperative that an EIA is carried out as part of its due diligence. The NCC concurs with this opinion and reiterates they are legally able to request the EIA under Section 43 of the National Conservation Act, NCA 2013. Reporting for Radio k News, I'm Dion Anglin. An environmental impact assessment is used to work out the details of a complex project. It makes sure that when a decision is made, it is done with the full understanding of the consequences on the environment and on the people. The Cayman made cartoon Bobo and Titi have gone beyond the horizon of our shores and found themselves all the way in Iraq. Cartoon creator Ben Hudson. It was just an idea we talked about in 2014 when we lived in West Bay and uh, we never thought it would become even locally what it has become. And now to hear that it's going out and abroad and helping kids over that uh, part of the world, that's really good. It feels good. It's uh, much more than we expected. From the minds of husband and wife duo Ben Hudson and Mary Abe, Bobo the Green Turtle and Titi the Blue Iguana were created to help promote Caymanian heritage, history and culture to children and adults in the Cayman Islands. We have a little one. He was like almost two at the time and we wanted to teach him uh, Caymanian culture. They inspired it really. We wanted a way to teach them about living on an island, uh, animals of the island, living with this much diversity on an island and make something that the kids could get and understand. And uh, it just blossomed. We didn't even start with the iguana and the, uh, the turtle. I think we started with crab. The cartoon duo appeared in a Cayman Islands Red Cross educational collaboration entitled My Body Is My Own, a child safety lesson designed to teach children about body safety. In 2020, they were used as advocates for the island's children to educate them on key health and safety messages on COVID-19. They were used across the Cayman Islands, the Caribbean region, distributed in the U.S., and shared on CIRC's social media. It was one of these health and hygiene videos that caught the eye of the Iraqi Red Crescent society. We worked with a really good team over there that tried to understand what we do with it here in Cayman, or a liaison there with the Red Cross, Karina. Mm-hmm. She really uh, tried to ensure all the right things in the show visually uh, so that we could translate it better. For instance, the cat boat landing, all the, the visuals changed to Iraqi visuals, but we kept the Cayman characters, the Caymanian things about the, the show. The finalized Arabic version of the video will be disseminated via the Iraqi Red Crescent Society's social media channels, as well as with Iraqi schools, the local Ministry of Education, Water Sanitation and Hygiene, partner agencies in Iraq, and within the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. Two members of the public are hailed as Good Samaritans. Yesterday, August 10th, they notified the Cayman Islands Coast Guard that a turtle was caught in a net which was attached to two buoys. With the information provided, CICG officers were able to locate and free the uninjured hawksbill, which is a critically endangered species. The net and buoys found appeared to be specifically designed to trap turtles. CIGC remind the public if anyone is found in breach of the National Conservation Act, they will be liable on conviction to a fine of 500,000 CI or four years in prison or both. The CICG encouraged the public to report any suspicious or illegal activities they see while out at sea, including poaching of any kind by calling 911 for immediate attention by the CICG or other relevant agencies. And that was your 6 o'clock news. For Radio Cayman, I'm Felicia Rankin-Solins.